Coming up on the Olympic Zone, photo finish. Whoa, three across the line. When dreams of gold can be dashed by a sliver of a second, what's keeping watch on the track? This is where history is being written. Plus, athletes who wear the stars and stripes every day. I'm able to serve my country and also do the sport that I'm so passionate about. Dr. John Torres with the military members of Team USA. And we take you inside the must-see museum where visitors are part of the art. The Olympic Zone starts now. It's the start of a new day of competition in Tokyo, and welcome to the Olympic Zone. I'm Laurel Porter. Oh, hold up. I'll, I'll be right back, Laurel, okay? I, I got this. I got where, this. Where are, where are you going? Uh, and Ooh. there is Orlando Sanchez heading over there. He's about, oh, I'd say about 20 feet, 28 feet away from me, and we're not social distancing Ooh. here. We are Krauser distancing. I love it, Laurel, and I'm already exhausted with this 15 pound dumbbell. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one down folks because imagine throwing a 16 pound weight across this studio. That sounds hard. This dumbbell, 15 pounds, I'm exhausted. But the pride of Barlow High School, Ryan Krauser, nearly tripled our studio and it won him a gold medal last night. His performance was so remarkable. Now inspiring and emotional. Krauser set the Olympic record back in 2016. Well, in Tokyo, he broke his own record on his first throw and he kept going, saving his best for last, throwing it 76 feet, five and a half inches to win gold. He came so close to breaking the world record he set in Eugene about a month ago. His family in Redmond celebrating together. That's awesome. Then. Krauser pulled out a piece of paper that said, Grandpa, we did it. 2020 Olympic champion. Krauser's grandfather passed away just before he left for Tokyo. His grandpa got him into the sport. Krauser said his first throws were in his grandpa's backyard. Before he passed away, his grandfather was losing his hearing, so Krauser would communicate with him by writing messages on paper. I was lucky to be able to spend so much time with him. And um, he still watched, would, I would send him training videos and he'd watch them hundreds and hundreds of times. So uh, he's been, been a coach for me, a, a huge supporter, and uh, he has to be cremated in the Team USA uh, Olympic team shirt that I had given him. So he was, he was a fan and supporter until the end. Wow, just powerful. He told NBC, I miss him, but I know he's here watching. I'm sure he'd be proud. Krauser is now a two-time Olympic gold medalist. Laurel? Oh, what a touching story, an amazing athlete. It was a heartbreaking night in Tokyo for former duck Devin Allen. He missed out on a medal in the 110 meter hurdles, but just barely. He finished fourth in the finals. This race is considered one of the biggest upsets on the track. USA's Grant Holloway was the heavy favorite to win gold, but Jamaica's Hansel Parchment beat him to the finish line with a time of 13.04 seconds. As for Allen, he was four one hundredths of a second from a medal. The American women advanced to the finals in the four by 100 relay. Former Oregon Duck English Gardner was part of the squad that finished with the second fastest time in qualifying. The final is coming up tomorrow morning at 6.30. In these Olympics alone, we've seen records fall and metal dreams realized and broken by the thinnest of margins. Sam Brock takes us inside some of the most electric endings so far. The Olympic Zone, brought to you by Omega, official timekeeper of the Olympic Games. A spotlight on heart-pounding finishes in Tokyo. Two icons, two stars, they're neck and neck. Reveals the glory of the games can also be its greatest hurdle. But it's Elaine Thompson-Hera. Oh! 
successfully defends her Olympic title. Jamaica's Elaine Thompson hurrah, breaking Flo Jo's 33-year-old Olympic record for the 100 meters by a hundredth of a second. But if you think that's close. Bramel, will he prevail? It's close on El Hughes from Great Britain with a very strong finish. American Trayvon Bromel was bounced in his semifinal by a thousandth of a second or millisecond, the tightest margin possible, dashing his gold medal dreams. In another semifinal showdown. Ronnie Baker's got a shot to win this. Oh, three across the line. American Ronnie Baker finishing in a virtual three-way tie. A trio of runners separated by a hundredth of a second. Allison Felix captured silver at the 400 meter race in Rio when the gold medalist Shawnee Miller Rebo dove over the finish line. Here comes the finish line. It'll be tight. A dive by Miller for the line. Sometimes it's about the lean, and just putting yourself in the best position to be able to really have a shot uh, to cross that line first. So how does Omega ensure the most accurate results? At the finish line is the most advanced photo finish camera that Omega has ever used. It creates 10,000 digital images every single second, and when athletes cross the line, it creates a composite photo the judges then use to set the rankings. The outcome then scrutinized in this room, the winner declared by which person crosses with the front of their torso first. In the pool, more nail biters on both the men's and women's side. Tori Haas just 18 years old from the United States, reaching for the wall. The women's 100 meter fly saw four swimmers all finish within 0.14 seconds with American Tori Haas on the outside looking in. And of course, Caleb Dressel, Caleb Dressel is trying to get his second individual goal in these games, and he'll do it with a world record for Dressel. Breaking his own world record by five hundredths of a second in the 100-meter fly. He just gets in there. Oh, boy, was that close. More proof. It's millimeters, not miles, in the pursuit of Olympic gold. That's so perfectly wow. put. Millimeters. I know. Breathtaking. Yeah. I mean, even Devin Allen, four hundredths of a second away from being on that podium. I know. It's, it's wild how close it is. it is. Well, Laurel, there's another innovation for track. In the past, starting pistols were flawed because those furthest away for it hurt it last. New starting pistols transmit a signal that triggers speakers behind each athlete, ensuring they all hear the start at the same time. A neat innovation because, as we just heard, every thousandth <laughs> counts. I had no idea they measure units of time that small, a thousandth of a second. <laughs> and it shows you the, the, the difference between winning and losing at the Olympics. Like Incredible. That. Coming up on the Olympic Zone, step inside the museum that surrounds your senses. Natalie Morales asks, is this the future of art? Plus, how many female soldiers in the U.S. Army's world-class athlete program have ever won an Olympic shooting gold medal? You're looking at the one soldier to do it, Amber English. Her story, ahead on the Olympic Zone. One more game. Uh, you know, it's been a, uh, a journey, you know, a fun one, us coming together as a team, and now we got one more to get. Oh, I love to hear it. Damian Lillard, Team USA, ready for the gold medal game in men's basketball. They turned on the Jets in the third quarter to beat Australia 97-78 in the semifinals. Kevin Durant took over, led the U.S. with 23 points. They'll get a rematch with France in the gold medal game tomorrow night at 7.30. Remember, France beat the U.S. in game one of these Olympics. We'll have it tomorrow night right here for you live. The Team USA women take on Serbia in the semifinals tonight. The U.S. beat Australia in the quarterfinals to do it. Tip-off tonight is set for around 940. The U.S. is looking for its seventh straight gold medal. The U.S. women's water polo team is moving on to the gold medal match after a win over the Russian Olympians. The Russians jumped out to an early lead, but Team USA battled back. Maggie Steffens had three more goals. Remember, she's the one with the most goals ever in women's water polo during the Olympic Games. USA wins 15-11 to make the gold medal match. They'll take on Spain Saturday morning. Team USA is looking for its third straight gold medal. 
Team USA is also on the volleyball court tonight. They'll take on Serbia in the semifinals. The U.S. beat the Dominican Republic Tuesday night despite missing a pair of starters, including star Jordan Thompson, who injured her ankle. Those players are recovering quickly and could be available to play tonight. Coming up on the Olympic Zone, what the military has given some members of Team USA. I wouldn't be here without the Marine Corps. Plus, we're going to take you inside one of Tokyo's most popular tourist attractions where you are part of the experience just ahead on the Olympic Zone. Hi there, Mike Tirico, Southern California in the spotlight tonight at the Tokyo Olympics. Costa Mesa's April Ross and Manhattan Beach's Alex Kleiman go for gold in beach volleyball. The A team is moving on. And on the track, former USC star Marietta's Michael Norman is a favorite in the men's 400 meters. Plus, we'll have finals in men's skateboarding and women's platform diving. All of that coming up tonight in primetime. They missed out on gold, but Team USA is taking home the bronze in women's soccer. They held off Australia this morning for the medal. Team USA jumped out to a big league, and check this out. A banger from former Portland pilot Megan Rapino. She had two goals, and so did Carly Lloyd. In fact, Lloyd now has the record for most Olympic goals with 10. But Australia made a, a strong late push. They almost tied it in stoppage time. The U.S. survives to win bronze. We heard from Portland Thorn star Crystal Dunn about the win and the Olympic experience. This game was wild. We could have definitely made it easier for ourselves. Uh, but no, Australia is a great team, you know. So we went into this game knowing it was going to be hard. It was going to be challenging. But, you know, we couldn't undo what we already did. Uh, we lost, obviously, in the semis and couldn't compete for a gold medal. And I think going into this game, we... We're faced with an incredible opportunity to still win an Olympic medal. Um, and so we are going to wear our uh, bronze medal proud. We're calling it rose gold. Um, and uh, we're really excited about it. And we found our joy tonight and proud of the team. I love the rose gold line. Team USA won 4-3. Dunn is one of four thorns on Team USA. Meantime, team captain Christine Sinclair will play for gold tomorrow with Team Canada. Every athlete on Team USA represents our country in the Olympic Games. But for some athletes, the flag on their uniform means something a little different. It's also on the uniform they wear every day. Here's Air Force veteran Dr. John Torres to explain. The Olympic Zone, brought to you by Black Rifle Coffee Company. We are America's coffee. When it comes to Olympic moments that will forever symbolize dedication, love of country, and devotion... Pole vaulter and U.S. Army Reserve First Lieutenant Sam Kendricks stopping dead in his tracks in Rio at the first note of the national anthem may never be surpassed. Although a positive COVID test will keep Lieutenant Kendricks home from Tokyo, nearly two dozen other U.S. service members are here in pursuit of gold. And she got it! Amber English climbs to the top of the podium in Tokyo, the gold medalist in women's skate. Amber's success is no surprise to me. You and I were talking all the time. You were trying to make ends meet, yeah. which wasn't giving you enough time to practice. No. Nope. And then all of a sudden, you started thinking about the Army's mm -hmm. program. Yes, and that was the stability that I needed to just be able to buckle down and just push me, you know, into success. She comes from a long line of straight shooters. Her dad, Steve, won five national shooting titles before a tragic diving accident took his life in 2016. I definitely knew that he was there and watching over and he'd be proud. Proud indeed of the Army's first ever female gold medalist in a shooting sport. But she's not the only soldier answering the bell here to make history. Staff Sergeant Naomi Graham of Fayetteville, North Carolina is the first female active duty service member to box for Team USA. Her journey to Tokyo was hardly a given. Briefly homeless as a teen, she started boxing eight years ago. Joining the Army was the best decision I could have ever made. I'm able to serve my country and also do the sport that I'm so passionate about. And passion jumps from every pound of Marine Staff Sergeant John Stefanowitz of Camp Lejeune, North Carolina the first Marine on Team USA Wrestling in nearly 30 years. I wouldn't be here without the Marine Corps. It's been a dream come true it's once in a lifetime. Service and sport, a perfect union for the military men and women of Team USA. 
hard work mentality and what the Army has provided, it was just the perfect storm for me. In case you're wondering, Dr. Torres knows Amber English from her work as a medic in Colorado. And it's not just athletes. There are at least four active duty military members coaching on Team USA 2. We thank them all for their service. Coming up on the Olympic Zone, the museum where computer programmers are as important as artists, and your experience is one of a kind. I'm gonna choose rainstorm. I feel like I'm getting rained on. Why this type of exhibit could be headed to a city near you, next on the Olympic Zone. Here's to the early risers, to another day where nothing comes easy and everything is earned. Anyone can put in a hard day's work, but to do it day in and day out, that takes sacrifice. So here's to the makers and the masters of craft, the backbone of industry for a country of free men and women. Hats off to you, hardworking Americans. Welcome back. The natural beauty of Tokyo has been on full display throughout these games. Laurel, but with attractions like capsule hotels and bullet trains, it's the tech that makes Japan's capital so fantastically futuristic. Natalie Morales takes us to a museum that's a special collaboration of artists and engineers. There are few places on earth that match the marriage of natural beauty and technological wonder that has come to define Japan. That intersection of nature and technology is part of the inspiration for Team Lab, an international collaborative of artists, engineers, and programmers who create stunning works on display around the world, including pieces in Miami, San Francisco, and a permanent collection called Borderless that has become a must-see for millions of visitors to Tokyo. Inside the cavernous Mori building, the art comes to life as an interactive, completely immersive experience. Look at this, the forest of flowers, and it even smells like flowers in here. As I found out, my interactions became part of the art itself. And when you touch it, the flowers disperse. Next stop, the Forest of Lamps, one of the many bright spots in a museum filled with picture-perfect backdrops. Wow. Including the mesmerizing crystal room, where you choose the environment. I'm gonna choose Rainstorm. I feel like I'm getting rained on. Finally, we're met by global brand director Takashi Kudo in the Sketch Aquarium to add my artistic touch to the wall. People are drawing this on the papers, okay. whatever they want. So whatever I draw will be projected onto the screen. Exactly. There goes my fish. Look. My fish projected not only on these walls, but 5,000 miles away in a sister exhibit in San Francisco. How would you describe the art that is here? Is it digital art? It is quite hard to like um, describe it. The history you're gonna decide. Why does it resonate with so many people? Some people has had interest with uh, like technologies, and some people had it uh, interesting with selfies. Really good selfies. <laughs> A truly unique experience in an unforgettable corner of the world. Oh man, wow. I already knew I wanted to go to Tokyo for the sushi, but now I see stuff like this and I'm like, how do I get there? I know we have learned so much in the show, makes me want to go too. And I was so curious about that place. I went online and it's got amazing exhibits. So search online for Team Lab and Borderless. You'll love it. We'll be right back. Coverage of the Tokyo Olympics is brought to you locally on NBC by Nissan. And before we go tonight, congratulations to India. They beat Germany in the bronze medal game for men's field hockey. It's now the first medal in the sport for India in more than 40 years. Of course, the win sparked massive celebrations back home, Orlando. Oh, you got to love it. Okay, Laurel, look who we ran into at PDX less than an hour ago. Yes, Raven Rogers is home in Oregon with her bronze medal. She is a big deal here. Welcome back. Congratulations. More Olympic coverage next. 
in a special edition of the story tonight at 11. Enjoy the games.